Okay, so in this class, we're going to look at how 3D works. Okay, and this isn't going to be on the exam, but I thought it would be interesting just to um, have a look at some of that. So if you think about stereo audio, what makes it stereo is that you've got one channel delivered to each ear separately. So if you've got two speakers, you know, on one side of the room, you have some chance of each ear getting a different sound. If you've only got one speaker, each ear is going to hear the same thing. With your headphones, you're delivering two separate sounds to each ear. Now, obviously, they're not completely different, but they're different enough that you can um, get a sense of, of stereo. Okay, stereo vision then requires some mechanism for sending a separate image to each eye. And so a 3D camera is typically going to have two lenses. So a special camera will take two images at the same time, but from slightly different points of view. And ideally the difference between the lenses is like kind of the distances your eyes would be apart ordinarily. Now in 3D systems where we might be generating a computer-generated 3D movie, it's just all done in, in software. But if you want to take actual 3D photos of a, of a real life scenario, um, you have a, a camera with, with two lenses. I don't know if you had them when you were a kid. When I was a kid, people would come back from holidays and places or you could get them and there would be this, this little viewer that you could put up to your eyes and it was like a disc and you'd move it around and you get like, you know, ooh, yeah, you know, Fatima in 3D, lovely, Lourdes, yay. Um, but um, the idea is, again, you have it up to your eyes, you can deliver a separate image to each eye. And so capturing two images is easy enough. Delivering them to your eyes separately is the tricky part. So you can get all these contraptions. Um, these things were beloved of Victorians. Um, they would have these little contraptions where you could um, see... 3D photos, obviously in black and white. And so this kind of thing here um, is a viewer that you can use to see two separate images, one to each eye. So it is you get so close to this that your eyes can't, um, they only see one of each. Google does a thing now where you can even get um, a cardboard thing you put on your, you know, cardboard to attach to your phone. And then you look at your phone and there's two images. And it's just a piece of cardboard, but it works quite well. Um, like some of the kind of virtual reality stuff, we'll see that in a second, that wasn't possible without lots of computing power now, but you have that in your phone nowadays, so that's, you know, you can do some interesting things. So anaglyphs are special glasses that have colored lenses. So usually cyan and, and red. So, with the red filter, only red light gets through. And with the blue filter, only blue light gets through. So the right eye doesn't see anything that's in red, and the, um, the left eye doesn't see anything that's in blue. And so between them then, you end up giving um, a separate image to to each eye. Another way, a better way really, is to use polarized light. You might have um, heard about polarized light in, in physics class if you did physics for the leading cert, but light is both waves and particles. And the waves are actually also kind of in, in, in two dimensions, three dimensions, two dimensions. So you can have a wave going this way and then another one going this way at 90 degrees to it. And what polarized light does, it, it, it blocks, um, it only allows the light through at, at one orientation. So with um, polarized sunglasses, for example, you have some of the light blocked because there's only one orientation coming through. So that can help remove reflections, for example, because when light bounces off something, 
it might be coming off polarized. And if you have polarized lenses, you're cutting out some of that. In the cinema, the glasses you have, the polarized lenses, one is at 90 degrees to the other. And then there's two images projected onto the screen, and there's polarizing lenses on the front of those as well. So when you look at it without the glasses, you see the two images. But when you put on the glasses, one eye only sees stuff that's coming through, say, like, you know, perfectly vertical, and the other eye only sees the stuff that's polarized perfectly horizontal. So it's a way to deliver a separate image to each eye. Um, I've heard of people who really hate 3D have got like um, 3D have have hacked um, two pairs so that they don't see the 3D anymore. So they can go to a 3D movie and only see it in 2D if they really want to do. Um, but the idea is that you're sending a separate image to each eye. That reduces some of the light coming through, which is why actually stuff made for 3D generally is very, very bright. The colors are really cranked up. It's a very, very bright screen. And because um, if you don't do that, it'll all appear quite dark. If you just make a movie in 2D, then you just have to remember that to, to tone it down a notch. Okay. So, um, so we have two images then projected onto the same screen. When they come off the screen, they're polarized in, in different orientations. On the desktop, it's quite a tricky thing to do, but you can get these special glasses that will um, like have shutters on them, like L, 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 LED shutters, LCD shutters. Um, so basically, you only look through one eye, and then a tiny amount of time later, you look through the next eye. So the idea is that um, one eye is blocked, and then the next eye is blocked. And it goes back and forwards, switching between left and right the whole time. And it happens so fast that you don't notice. So it's showing you the left eye, a left image, showing you the right eye. Left eye, right eye, left eye, right eye, left eye, right eye, left eye, right eye. But just super fast, so you don't actually notice it. If it's not fast enough, you can get a bit a bit car sick. Okay, so the glasses are synchronized then with the screen. So there's software, and um, there may be there's software typically that interacts with the glasses, that the screen and the glasses are synchronized, and so that each eye then only gets a, a separate image. So if you have a head-mounted display, you can even organize it so that when you look up, the image is generated quickly enough so that you would see what's up there, or like left, and it would show you what would be to the left. And if you turn it up to the right, it would show you what would be to the right. So if you have sensors in the display that can tell you what you're looking at, you can generate a, a virtual reality. It has to be fast enough, though, that there isn't a time lag, so you don't, you know, so we can get a bit car sick. Um, this used to use huge computing power, but now you can actually do something quite convincing with your phone. And you have, of course, you have a, hello, come on in. You also have an accelerometer in your phone, which can detect the orientation of the phone. So by um, combining all those and the piece of cardboard from Google, you can actually have a stab at virtual reality on your phone, which is pretty, pretty impressive. And um, so VR is very useful for training and stuff like that. You know, training people to fly planes or firefighters, things like that. Okay. Um, QuickTime VR was a, a technology from Apple. They, they've kind of abandoned it now, really, but it was a cool thing where you could take images together. You could stitch images together to form a panorama, and then you could scroll around that. But at any one time, you're only looking at a particular thing. But as you turned around through it, it was quite convincing. Um, created the illusion of navigating through a virtual environment. It also did a thing where you could have objects and, and rotate them and manipulate them. 
Um, that's still around, but Apple doesn't really support it that much anymore. Although we did see some of the technology end up in the, the panorama feature on your mobile phone. It stitches the images together. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you some, some 3D images.